<clears throat> Good people, imagine the most convenient, seamless gaming slash audio experience for your PC and mobile combined into a single package. That's what the SteelSeries Nova Pro Wireless is like. This thing is impressive on so many levels, build quality, battery life, hub, software experience, audio quality, both in Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz connections, connectivity and stuff, and is by far the best audio product SteelSeries has ever put out. I've been using this thing for the last two months on a daily basis, getting to know it, and I think you should too, if you can afford it. Let me explain. With this headset, you never have to worry about battery life. You don't have to plug it in. You simply swap out the battery that is inside the headset with the one that is constantly charging inside the hub. That is absolutely brilliant and have zero downtime. The battery is on the right ear cup. It sits behind this magnetic plate that is nice and strong on there. So you don't have to worry about like it flying out if you shake it vigorously. So you have to intentionally remove it. The batteries are labeled so you know exactly how to plug them into the base. The swap happens in under five seconds and the headset restarts automatically. So you don't have to worry about powering this thing back on after a battery swap. Each battery is rated for up to 20 hours of continuous usage. With two batteries, you have 40. So constantly swapping them back and forth never have to touch a USB-C cable again. But if you are more of a mobile user and still need to charge the headset, the USB-C port is available, located in a really strange and kind of a weird position on the left ear cup. So at least that's an option. Now SteelSeries has made sure that you know when the battery is low. So first of all, we have a flash indicator on the hub. So you know you have to swap out the battery. There's also a constant double beep in the headset letting you know the battery is low. And also there is almost as this balance in stereo. So the left ear cup is more muted. So if you're playing game, watching movie and all of a sudden things on the right side are louder. That is also this audible indication that you should swap the batteries. And this only happens when the battery is at critical level. You won't have the stereo disbalance when you're anything above it. Steel series making things smart. I also feel like Steel Series have done a fantastic job when it comes to comfort. Like the leather here, so smooth, just like this transition to today's video sponsor. Oh yes, I've always wanted to be inside one of these 27 inches of pure Dimitri Pixels. You can kind of see into my soul. Oh, what's this behind me? Just a 576 mini LED zone for gorgeous exposure and <laughs> HDR performance with the 1200 nit peak brightness. Feel the immersion in reality with the new 4K 160Hz mini LED monitor, the Cooler Master GP27U, bringing everything to life. Welcome back. So there is some remnants of the Steel Series staple when it comes to comfort with this self-adjusting headband. You can relocate it to a second position if you find the headset to be too small for you. And of course, we have size extensions on the ear cups, which is absolutely a must. Just because I found the previous Steel Series headsets that only relied on the self-adjusting headband way too small for my head of hair. Now my ears are different size and I find it to be not a problem at all in terms of depth and the softness and the passive isolation that this ear cup seal. It is a bit warm in the summer, but as it is with any pleather cushion, but they work very well with glasses and also extend beyond to accommodate a VR headset. So no problem there. The only hiccup with comfort from other people that I've read is the knob in the center of the driver that protrudes a little bit too much and makes contact with some ears. For me, luckily it does not. I don't really feel them. I do have to air out my ears once in a while, but I never have this like point of contact outside of the actual ear cup. I think I got kind of lucky there, but also the headset folds on your neck properly with the drivers facing down. I have nothing negative to say about the build quality. Everything feels robust. I'm confident this thing will last for a couple of years, no problem. My only mind complaint are with these magnetic side cups. They are aluminum with this very fine brushed uh, circular texture. And every time you try to take them off and your nail accidentally gets stuck, all that gunk gets left on the aluminum. Not cool. All the controls are intuitive with a power button on the left side with an LED above, so you don't cover it when you power it on. We have a mic mute that illuminates red on the microphone when it is muted and a nice tactile volume wheel with a click functionality that enables you to go between different adjustment of chat mix. There's a 3.5 millimeter jack over here for wired operation and a Bluetooth button on the right. I really appreciate that we have separate power and Bluetooth buttons so you can use either without affecting the other. And there's also a way to turn on Bluetooth 
automatically when you power on the headset and there's this toggle in the software. Now, at first, I did not fully grasp the usefulness behind having both Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz connections running simultaneously on this headset until I started using this on a daily basis and having music feed from my phone into this via Bluetooth and having 2.4 gigahertz connection directly off the computer and having all the audio sources and gaming stuff feed into the headset without interrupting what's happening on my phone. Also, the Bluetooth connection goes directly into the headset. You don't need the hub. So this is full on. You can go outside with this and it's a beautiful headset for outdoor use as well on a regular mobile Bluetooth connection. And by the way, this is what the microphone sounds like without sonar. So default, nothing applied to it. The mic side tone I have enabled and it's instantaneous without any delay. Thank you. And this is what the microphone sounds like with SteelSeries Sonar running in the background with my desired microphone preset to give me a little bit more low end to e equalize the, the volume, for example, and crush the background noise a little bit. It's not the best sounding microphone, but it is totally passable. And the software experience here is very good in terms of fine tuning your desired vocal preset and having that full mobility of configuring the levels too when it comes to chat mix and what uh, SteelSeries Sonar is putting out. Now the base station is really cool in how it can charge your batteries. You can basically manipulate all the settings for the headset for both 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth on the hub itself without needing to access the software. But the software is so powerful and I'd rather just navigate through SteelSeries Engine or Sonar for all my EQ needs than needing to fiddle around with this thing. But this thing does does have a few cool tricks up its sleeve. So first we have two home screens, simple or detailed. I prefer detailed. We have two USB-C ports at the back for two sources. So I'm running this off my PC, but if you bought the PlayStation or the Xbox versions, the other port will go to the other source and you can switch between them. We also have line in and line out at the back for a little bit more expansion and connectivity. You can manipulate the brightness of the mic mute LED. So if it's way too bright by default, you can tone it down a bit. So here the volume wheel, for example, is nice and smooth. There's no easy way to mute the actual volume of the headset, which is unfortunate. You have to go all the way down, but also clicking this thing to navigate the menu, you can't do it, right? The hub is so light, so you have to constantly do it with two hands. So long clicking it to enter our menu. In the wireless settings here, you can uh, go into pair the 2.4 gigahertz dongle in case uh, you lose connection for some reason. And we also have the mode. So we have range and we have speed. So I choose speed because I'm right in front of the, the hub. I don't need the range. And in Bluetooth settings, you can either have it turn on by default uh, clear all the paired devices directly off the, the thing and auto mute. Also this glossy part at the front, it's already scratched up. If you're primarily a PC user, the hub is mostly a gimmick, but if you are on the console, for example, being able to manipulate all these settings directly from the hub, is great. Now, the reason why I think this wireless headset is above the competition is because of the combination of factors. ANC is not aggressive, but it helps to mute out distant things. And with the passive isolation already very good, it just helps to mute out everything in your environment. And even at like 50%, 60% volume, you're gonna be flying. Absolutely nothing uh, will be entering into the headset for you to hear from your outside world. The transparency mode, which I have enabled right now, is fantastic. It helps you hear things. It does introduce a little bit of, um, you know, noise into the audio. Double tap the power button to enable it. Double tap. Uh, to disable it, go back to ANC. The audio performance on this thing is absolutely impressive for a wireless pair. There's a lot of really nice detailed resolution on the high end without introducing anything harsh. At full blast volume, it's a lot of power. I have to always uh, turn it down a little bit. And there's just really nice bass region as well that is tight and controlled. It is a really fun sound signature that does not fall apart regardless of the genre. So if you're an FPS gamer, if you're doing strategy, some storytelling, atmospheric, whatever, this thing is going to deliver. Now, generally, I try to stay away from surround sound implementations and EQ, but man, SteelSeries Sonar is doing it right. For example, enabling any of the game sound presets in the EQ actually makes the game sound better. It really massages the EQ for that particular game to make it pop. But for me, it's the spatial audio toggle that absolutely blew me away in terms of how beautiful it expanded the audio environment for a really 
uh, like speaker-like effect. It did not feel like I was wearing headphones at all. And that's really difficult to achieve, especially for a wireless headset. And you can have a little bit of that slider play around. So in Spider-Man, for example, maxing out the slider is excellent because you're in this massive open world, but closing it down if you're playing something a bit more constrained and petite really helps, like playing Factory for EFT. And when you go into Bluetooth, the audio still holds its ground. It doesn't have as much resolution as on 2.4 gigahertz, but still has beautiful detailed treble and nice bass response that is rich and deep and it doesn't even feel like I'm listening to things on Bluetooth. And for $350, it is an expensive hybrid, but it's a proper desktop wireless uh, option for sure. And the fact that you can still use this outside, like in terms of its low profile nature, and it's not a super gamery design, is a huge positive for the Bluetooth mobile crowd. But for me, the biggest three things this headset delivers is comfort, sound quality, and I don't have to worry about battery life because of that really seamless swap. But I will say that the microphone here is not as good as what Corsair has been delivering with their wireless pairs. Like the HS80 wireless sounds absolutely incredible. And still serious, I love the direction you're taking for the driver tuning, but please find a new microphone capsule. Thank you very much. I'm Dimitri and I'll talk to you in the next video.